every ant keeper's worst nightmare. It's probably that their super expensive brand new bull ant queen died two days after arrival. Let's get real here. But second to that are that their ants would be escaping. I'm sure everyone watching this who either are keeping ants or thinking of doing so have had this fear. And believe me, I did too. Those of us who are still living with our parents probably heard this question a thousand times before they were allowed to get some of these wonderful critters. What if they escape? There are, to my knowledge, very few escape pets that are harder to manage than tens of thousands of 2mm tiny tiny ants especially when it is a genus like Fidoli. As you probably figured out by now, my Fidoli colony kinda escaped, yeah. I've had two other colonies escape on me before, one of them being a super tiny colony of Colobopsis truncata with two workers, which I found and collected back in two minutes, they were hiding under a small flower pot, and another escape where a semi-adult colony of a Temnothorax species, which was much worse than the Colobopsis, but Temnothorax are just one of those species that are just super slow and chill, so they didn't really move far at all, and actually came back to me when I offered them a little bamboo stick inside of their nest. Easy peasy. Now a Fidoli colony large enough to devour entire lizards, you don't want to escape. You, you really don't. Not only are their numbers gonna make collecting them back a pain, but Fidoli as a genus are not slow and gentle like my Temnothorax was. Alright, let's rewind and set the scenario up for you. This is my Fidoli Polydona colony setup, a smaller fish tank that I made into a bioactive vivarium. I made a video on it before. It has a lip that goes around the edge, which I apply olive oil on. This prevents any ants from making it further than that lip, since they slip off when they're trying to climb upside down on olive oil. Ever since I made this setup, I have been procrastinating making a lid for it, and I mean, I have not really had to, since the olive oil burial has been working flawlessly, like I haven't seen one single ant out of the setup ever. One day, however, I came down to my animal room to do my usual Saturday ant feeding. When I saw it. Loose ants. Now, now, I have had wild ants in my room before, as well as some stragglers I accidentally let out, but this was a Fidoli worker that I saw. And we don't have Fidoli in Sweden. My heart raced a bit when I realized the possibility of them having escaped. I told myself again and again that no, this must be just from last week's feeding, just a little straggler that I missed somehow. But at a quick glance at their setup, a fatal flaw could be spotted. One of the plants had grown so tall it touched the lip's edge, making it possible for them to escape. Now, as you can imagine, my top priority was not exactly to start recording everything. I didn't even think about it, to be honest. The instant I saw that the plant was touching the lip, I cut it down. So here is a shot of the grass when it was cut down, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Luckily, I figured to at least record some of my actions in order to maybe make some sort of video out of this. And here we are. So, step number one was to figure out how many had escaped, because until now I had only seen one worker or so. And that didn't exactly look too good. Um, the next step was trying to figure out where they went. When thinking about this, I put myself in the mind of an ant. What would an ant do? What would an ant think? Why would an ant do? And what does an ant do, 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 do? Alright, after asking myself these very existential questions, my mind went to the nearest nesting spot. Dirt. Or some other form of humid digging medium. Now, talking about dirt and plants, I kinda have an entire shelf just dedicated to plant growing, encased in plastic to make it more humid. So, I think we all know where they went. Looking closer, I noticed that there were some pots which seemed more crowded with ants than others. And as I said earlier, my head wasn't really on the recording area, I just wanted to get this fixed because there were loose ants in my room. <laughs> so I just rushed setting up the camera, trying to get a shot of me uh, taking this box and smearing it with baby powder. What I tried doing here was to creating a spot where I could empty all of the soil from the pots, as that's probably where they were hiding, inside of some kind of ant safe container where they can't escape. 
Baby powder is much more messy to apply, but it isn't sticky, so that's why I chose it. But when I was done applying the baby powder, I didn't feel like risking them escaping from this box too, so I added another barrier layer of olive oil. I was pretty paranoid to say the least. So I managed to get that together in all of my tremendous stress and started taking out the pots one by one. The first pot I checked didn't really look crowded at all, but I wanted to get some sort of technique down. So I checked it first, and as I thought, nothing more than a few workers running about. This was in other words not where their satellite nest was. Now, when taking the second pot, I realized the magnitude of my problem, cause holy, that is a ton of ants. A thought crossed my mind that perhaps the queen had escaped too. I mean, the plant that they escaped on had probably stood touching the edge of the lip for about a week, so they could have had plenty of time to move the colony out. I feared the worst, but I got to work, trying to find their chambers. Now, I checked this plant very thoroughly, but forgot to press the record button when I emptied it out and looked at in the dirt. As I said, my prior was not making a video, but saving my dear Fidoli colony. Luckily, this wasn't the pot of their big satellite nest either. They seemed to have just begun constructing chambers in this pot, so I was getting closer. Now the next two pots, well I didn't really expect this, but there was brood. They had moved brood, so I was sure that this meant that the queen had been moved as well. I feared the worst. I carefully opened up the pots. After first emptying the brood into their setup, I found nothing more than a few scouting workers in my Myrmicodia plant. Which was amazing, since this plant actually has a cool symbiosis with ants in the wild, offering them housing in exchange for defense. The plants grow arboreally and produce these huge bulbous parts where they make actual natural chambers for the ants, just waiting for a colony to move in. Pretty epic, but off topic, sorry. Alright, opening the next pot, and... Bingo! They had made some pretty large chambers in this poor plant's root systems, and had plenty of brood. Well, all I could do was to tear it all apart and try collecting every single worker, brood, and of course the queen if I found her. I must say that doing all of this made me pretty sad since I realized that I had not provided the optimal housing for my dear ants, since the reason they would move into this pot would obviously be since it provided a better environment than their original setup. I realized that I had probably been a bit careless when it comes to watering on their old setup, always worrying that I would flood their chambers but I realize now that I should have been watering much more often. I reasoned that the queen of this colony was caught in southern Spain and that they surely didn't live in some sort of super tropical forest over there, but I suppose I was wrong in the sense of how humid the ground they live in in the wild really is. You live and you learn, I kept telling myself, but I still felt like a pretty useless antkeeper. As you've seen in the background here, I went through every single tablespoon of dirt in all the pots I had in the quest to find the queen, if she now had escaped. And to my disappointment, I did not find her. Now, this might mean two things. One, that she never left the old setup and is just chilling in the royal chamber. Or two, that I accidentally crushed her or missed her while searching for her. Believe me, I was thorough and looked through it all and I will have to put my trust in that she never escaped in the first place. And that she was still in the old setup. But I guess I will never know for sure until it's too late. Since all the plants were out of the shelf, I decided to clean it a bit and place a mat for it to suck up excess water from watering, with the idea of any future escaping ants perhaps nesting inside the wet fabric instead of the soil in the pots, making it much easier to collect them again. I mean, you can always hope, but if not, at least it looks much better. Alright, since about half the colony had escaped, the vivarium was pretty empty, so I figured this was as good time as any to clean it out from old leftovers. Usually, when keeping tiny species like Fidoli, this is a very hard thing to do when they reach a considerable colony size, like this colony was. But this was an opportunity that I perhaps would not get again, so I took it. It's kinda crazy to think that they have dug all this dirt you see here from underground. Just think of all the chambers and tunnels that they have down there. Pretty cool. Anyhow, with the Varium now emptied of the larger piles of trash, it was time to pour in the newly acquired dirt that all the escaped ants were residing in. I did this by simply removing the barrier in a corner and pour them all into the Vivarium. With it all being clumped up like this, I figured to spread it out with a brush. 
I didn't really want to push down on the dirt too much as there was much brood still mixed inside. And perhaps the queen, if I by some chance miss her. With it all spread out, I noticed a lot of ant activity. This made me happy, as I felt some hope for this colony to regrow to their former glory. I then let the vivarium sit for one day, just to let them collect most of the brood and such. The next day came around and it was time to finish this up. As you see here, this is the plant sprout that had grown to touch the lip. Such an annoying mistake. For good measure, I went over the plant again, trimming them down even more. Alright, now it was time to fix my previous mistake. Watering. First, I misted all the dirt in the tank, making the top layer moist and able to absorb water more easily. I then showered the tank with more than sufficient enough water. Now they can't complain about being dry at least. As I mentioned, I think this was the fatal flaw that made the colony want to move before, their nests not being moist enough. So I have promised myself to take better care of them, so that major accidents like this won't happen again. I added a layer of leaf litter as well, in order to preserve moisture as much as possible. When I looked at the ant shelf, I found this little straggler worker, probably looking for his nest, where it had been sitting before. I found many more of these stragglers in the following days, and I collected them all into the tank. Speaking about the tank, I made a little upgrade. A lid. This will hopefully prevent this from happening again, at least as severe. The lid is fastened with magnets on the underside of the lip, and is also equipped with a fine meshed steel netting for ventilation. Having this lid will also help with keeping moisture inside, so that we can avoid them ever feeling the need to move out again. This was by all means the worst ant experience I have had in a long time, and I hope by watching this video you have learned from my mistakes. As of recording this audio, I can say that they have grown in numbers, and have started to swarm their food like they used to do in the colony's former glory. Thank you so much for watching, as well as sticking with me and the channel. I know I have been gone for quite a while, not posting for 4 months or so. I simply have a lot of things going on in my life as of now. So this might unfortunately be the standard for some months, since I've started a bachelor's university degree in biology this autumn, which hopefully justifies my lack of uploading somewhat? Yeah. If you still want to stay in touch, I love chatting to you guys through my DMs on Instagram at ants underscore Scandinavia, so go follow me there, I reply to all of you. Anyways, thank you again for sticking with me, and I hope to see you scavengers next time. Bye!